All right, and these are all the pieces from the Ender 3. So let's take a look at the instructions here. So they kind of just show you all the things that are included here and then how to put them all together here step by step. So it doesn't look too awful. And there's 12 steps total. So step one is to put on these longer channels. So and these both two are a little bit different. And I'm guessing it's probably these. Yep, these are definitely it. So before we continue, I want to show you this little tool pack they give you. So they give you some tools here, some zippy ties, Allen wrenches, and a little screwdriver. So this other bag actually has a lot of little parts in there. So it looks like we have some kind of end caps, spool holder, nuts, a belt, and screws. Lots of different kind of screws. So, but before we can build anything, the first thing we need to do is we need to adjust this bed because if we start building it, we won't be able to flip it over. All right, so we got the printer upside down and what we're gonna need is some tools. So we're gonna need a wrench and an Allen wrench. So the Allen wrench is for the bolt to loosen it and tighten it. And the wrench is to turn the little nut underneath. So one side has the eccentric nuts, as you can see, this is the side. The other side doesn't have anything. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna work off of this side. And right now you can see that we have a lot of wobble. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this one here. So we're gonna just loosen it up a bit. So we're gonna turn it ever so slightly until it has like barely any pushing. Right when it meets resistance, you wanna stop. And we wanna stop there and go to this one next. Cause you don't wanna over tighten one of them. Same thing for this one, we're just gonna go just a little bit until it meets resistance. So once it meets resistance, we're just gonna stop right there. So we're gonna check it. So that feels pretty good. So I'm gonna back them off just a little bit and see if we have any kind of wobble. Seems still very solid. So it seems like to be just perfect if you barely tighten them and right when you get some resistance, you back off just a little bit. So if you got no wobble, you got it right. Then you're gonna tighten this Allen bolt here, but make sure that you hold your wrench when you're tightening this because you don't want your eccentric mutt to move any from being tightened because it will move. So once you get those two nice and tight, you should not have any wobble whatsoever between this frame and the main frame here. And you can check that by going up and down and side to side. But don't make these too tight because if you do, the wheels will shred and you will see that over time. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna find a very, very level place, like a very level table. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen all these bolts here on each side and you're gonna make sure your feet are sitting level and then you're gonna re-tighten these. All right, so my under three was very level so I didn't have to do anything, but I went ahead and tightened these bolts on the side because they were kind of loose. So you definitely wanna make sure all your bolts are nice and tight because even though they put them together, they don't tighten them sometimes all the way. All right, so we got this channel and it has two holes right here. And this one actually goes on this side right here. So these are the bolts that you use for that and they're called M545. So we're gonna take our bolt and then go from the bottom. So we're just gonna start that. And same thing to the other one, right next to it. So you're gonna use the largest wrench that they give you, the Allen wrench. And then you just wanna snug these up. You don't wanna go too tight yet because we still have to do the rest of the frame. So I'm just gonna get them a little bit snug and that should be good enough. So, and the channel does move side to side. It's definitely gonna need to align, so don't tighten that yet. So same thing for this side. So for this side, these little holes here go to the bottom. Same thing here, we're just gonna snug them up. All right, so on to step number two, which is the power supply and the control screen here. So, so let's go ahead and start with the power supply because there's a very important thing that you need to do before you do anything. And that is to switch to your voltage. So it looks like they preset them always to the 220 voltage, which is most of Europe and Asia and all that stuff. So, but if you're in the United States, you obviously need to switch that to the 110 or 115 there that it says. So as simple as just switching it and you're good to go. So yeah guys, don't forget to do that before you do anything actually, because you don't want to mess up your power supply or your printer because of that. So these two holes here is what the supply mounts on. And it just goes just like that. And then we're gonna put our bolts through here. So the bolts are called M420. And so we're gonna just put them right through there. Then we're gonna line up the supply and screw it in. And that's it, we are done here. All right, so the next part will be the display control unit thingamajigger. And that's what that looks like. So this just goes right here and there's two bolts. So the two bolts that go there are called M58. So as you can see guys, these line up pretty easily and we can go ahead and snug these reasonably well. 
and that's the control panel there. All right, for step three, looks like we're gonna be installing the Z axis switch. So let's go ahead and find the switch and install that. So on the Z switch here, we have the T nuts there. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna loosen it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go inside the channel and then you're gonna turn them and then you're gonna tighten the bolt. And that's how this thing holds. So and if you look right here, there's a little piece of plastic that protrudes past. That's actually what sits on the frame right here telling it the location. So you're simply just gonna butt against that like that and then just tighten it right here. But don't over tighten it because this is plastic and it's just a switch so it doesn't need to be very tight. All right, so now we're at step four and that is the Z motor. So the Z motor already has the bracket on there and it simply just goes right here, just like that. And the two bolts that go on there are M418-P. So the two bolts just go in there just like that and then they just screw into the frame. So we can go ahead and make these pretty snug and that's it. And I guess we can go ahead and put our rod in there. So make sure you set rod down all the way and then we can tighten those two little Allen screws there. Well, actually you just want to screw one of them because the other one is already tight. All right, so that's pretty snug and everything looks okay. All right, so the next step is step five and it looks like we're gonna be putting the little Bowden tube feeder coupling in and then putting this whole thing on a channel and it looks like a couple bolts go in that, so. All right, so we have two more channels left and the longer one that has like these more holes, little holes and stuff like that, that's the one we need for the X axis. This one actually just goes on top. All right, so here we have the X axis assembly and also the extruder up here. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to thread this into here and then we're gonna tighten that up real good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need to connect this channel. If you look at it, there's a back and a front. The back is actually with these little cutouts here that they're accommodating like a bolt. And so one of them has a bigger distance and the other one has a smaller distance. So you want the one with the smaller distance. The wobbled out area right here actually goes over that bolt right there. It just goes just like that. And then we're gonna put two screws through here and there's actually holes on the other side so you can you know put your wrench through. And these are the bolts you'll be using. They're called M416. So what I'm gonna to do to make it easy for myself is I'll go ahead and put them through the hole and then I'll get my wrench ready and get ready to uh, tighten them. Hold it all together and then just tighten the bolts. And essentially this is what you get. All right, so step six is putting the hole hot in on there and then putting this bracket in on the other side. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna roll into there just like that. So the next piece is this bracket here and it goes on the back side here. You see where that cutout is again? This bolt here goes in there just like that. And then there's two bolts, one in here and the other in here. And those are the M416s. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten these pretty well and that should be good. So step seven looks like we're gonna have to put the belt on there and step eight is the adjuster at the end there that tightens the belt. So we're gonna go ahead and do seven and eight together here. So here we have the belt in the baggie. So the belt is not too complicated. Here are the two ends of the belt where they're gonna hook. And then the belt just goes around. And if you can see inside that cover there, there's a sprocket gear. It goes around that gear and then goes on the top and goes, believe it or not, underneath these rollers in that channel there. And then it'll go to this end where our little bracket tensioner is and around that and then just back to this point. Not too difficult, just basically in a circle. So first I'm gonna go under these wheels. So then I'll, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it under there and then I'm just gonna roll them over. And then from there, we're gonna go inside this box here. So this could get a little tricky. You might have to do a little fishing here and there, but it's not too bad. So you're just gonna go right around that sprocket. So once you get under the sprocket, you're ready to, to just hook right under here. Slots right in there, just like that. And so the other end just goes around here and then slots in here, just like that. So the adjuster is in the filament bag, and this is what it looks like. So you're gonna be working with these little T-nuts here. So and this goes in there pretty simply. You just put the T-nuts in there, and then the belt would just simply go over this. And now we can tighten it up and then tighten these bolts. So here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use another wrench, and I'm gonna kinda pry on it just a little bit to make it tight, and then I'm just gonna tighten these up. So once you're happy with the way the belt is tight, it doesn't have to be super tight, it's just gotta be a little bit tight. If you make it too tight, you might wear the belt out and all the components, but you don't want it to be loose either, so. So we are done with step seven and eight. So step nine is putting that whole assembly we just built on top of these rails here. All right guys, so I accidentally messed up. I thought I was recording, but I didn't. I went ahead and put this in and this, but let me explain real quick what I did. Unfortunately, these things happen, but so what we did 
did is we put this main piece here that we built on top through on these rails and you want to make sure that these rails here are loose like they're moving around the bolts underneath are not tight and so what you're going to do is you're going to put this piece on top and you're going to turn this because there's a little bushing here with a little thread that goes into the t-rod here so you're just going to put it in into here and then you know spin it where it grabs it and pulls it down so that part is simple enough but the important part is that these two main beams here these channels they're loose so after we got this piece in there and sitting on the rod here and then what we're going to do is we're going to install this other channel here and so this channel just goes in here and the part that's wallowed out on the top goes up and then the bolts go through here and the bolts were m5 25s and then there's little plastic end caps right here on each side and those just click in pretty easily i can pull one out right now that's what that looks like so it just clicks right in there and it kind of gives it a little nicer touch there so when you tighten this channel you don't want to tighten it tight you just want to barely tighten it you know just get it started and then after that go to the bottom and tighten the main two screws on each side of this main channels here and then when you get that tight you can tighten these and the reason you want to do that is because you want everything to kind of find its place you don't want to force anything because the more force you have the more stiff everything's going to be and you know wear things out and be misaligned and things like that so basically step nine and step 10 is what we skipped there so so the next part is step 11 and this is the spool holder so this should be easy enough so what we're going to need is the m58 bolts and then we're going to need the m5 t nuts and then our metal bracket the spool holder cylinder part and here we have the spool holder nuts so we're just going to put our bolts through there and then start our little t nuts on the bolt so and then we're going to come in here and put this in the channel so I'm gonna go that way as much as I can. The reason why is because, you know, that's where the roll feeds into here. I wanna try to get close as possible to the extruder. So the same thing here, just make sure your little T-nuts are aligned and then you can tighten this. Sometimes these little T-nuts can be a little bit of a hassle because they don't wanna turn inside the channel. You might have to grab something like a little screwdriver or just another piece and turn them inside the channel. All right, so once that's nice and tight, then we can go ahead and put our little spool part on. And that'll go just like that. And then this little washer goes on this side. And that's it. Now we got ourselves a little spool holder up here. All right, guys. And that's pretty much all the structural parts. So the rest is just kind of connecting everything together. So one of the things you want to go ahead and connect is this little Bowden tube part. The little tube that goes into the fitting here. And that's pretty simple. You just stick it in there. And you push it in there, you know, pretty hard until it goes in. And then, you know, it should not come out anymore. All right, guys, so the last step is step 12, and that is connecting all the electronic parts. And as you can see here, we got the extruder, the x-axis, the main power. Then we have the z-axis to the motor there. And then we got to the screen, Bowden tube, which we already connected, the x-axis switch, and then the z-axis switch. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward, and all the cables in the back are labeled here. So it shouldn't be too hard to figure out where everything goes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six and then the screen connections here so it's not that much and as you can see it's all labeled e x x again so the smaller ones are for the switches and the larger ones is for the motors so this x bunch here goes to the top here and all we got to do is just plug them in so this says e so that's for extruder and just like that and then this x the larger one is for the motor and then our last one is for the switch and it's a little bit hard to get to but it's not that bad and that's it. So if we just go down, we can see there is a Z switch wire here. So and it was here already. And that just will go to this little switch here on the back side. Just like that. All right, so we're at the back again. And so now we just need to plug this guy in. And this is the Z motor. And that's it. So all we're left with back here is the power connector between the power supply and the printer itself. So the Y axis is already connected. It already comes pre-connected, the switch and the motor. So let's go ahead and plug this power cord in. And that's pretty much all the connecting. The last thing we gotta do is connect the screen. So the screen has a ribbon cable that goes to it from under here. So we're gonna probably have to cable manage this later on. So under here, there's three connectors. So I'm just gonna plug into the middle one and that should be pretty good right there. So now that everything's together, it's pretty exciting to get it running, but we can't do that yet. What we need to do first is we need to make sure all these eccentric nut adjustments on all these wheels here are perfect because I know that this is too tight already because this, this has really force and it has like a jump in between. But it definitely got a lot better just by loosening just a little bit already. So I'm just gonna go till it barely bites. 
like barely barely bites and then back off just a little so yeah guys now this thing is really nice and smooth there's nothing too weird it feels very smooth so you want it to feel smooth so spend extra time on getting all this right because if you don't you're gonna ruin your little wheels here pretty quick and you know then you're gonna have to replace them so i'm gonna go ahead and check everything and adjust everything and then we'll power this thing on and see if it turns on all right i think i'm pretty happy with everything so i'm gonna go ahead and plug this plug in right here so all i gotta do now is hit the switch well, I didn't look at the instructions good enough. The screen needs to be connected to EXP3, so, because the screen's not coming on. So the third one is the one that's closest to the printing bed. All right, let's try that again. There we go. And the screen lights up. So there's a little film here, we we'll take that off. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, it does make sounds. All right, let's go to out of home so that's going to be the uh, test make sure everything works all right so i'm going to hit out of home and let's see what happens 